Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus, and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is day 265. And to God be the glory. The Word of God, the Bible says, is quick and powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I don't know whether the believer realizes how powerful the Word of God is. I've said this before. I'll take my liberty to say it again and emphasize it. There's no such thing as overemphasizing this truth. May it be ingrained in the hearts and minds of everybody listening, everybody watching. Hear it, hear it again. After you hear it again, hear it a third time, hear it a fourth time, hear it again, hear it until it just is saturated in your spirit and you can quote it without thinking about it. The Word of God is powerful. It's so powerful that is the only thing that Jesus used to defeat the enemy. When Jesus went on his fast 40 days after he was baptized and uh, the Spirit of God came on him, he was anointed, he was driven into the wilderness. And it was immediately after this baptism, after this spiritual encounter, this spiritual phenomenon that he experienced, that he went through severe trying. Now, oftentimes people have this awesome move of God. People have this awesome encounter with the Holy Spirit. And it seems like immediately afterwards, they encounter all kinds of problems. They encounter all kinds of troubles. All kinds of issues come up. All kinds of hell is loosed against them and people wonder, man, what did I do wrong? I've been feeling the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden, uh, trauma, drama is going on in my life. All hell is breaking loose. The devil is fighting me tooth and nail. I don't understand. Did I do something wrong? No. You haven't done anything wrong. This is what happens when you have a significant experience, albeit Throughout the 40 days that Jesus is tempted and tried and tested of the devil, the only thing that he uses is the word of God. He uses the word of God to defeat the devil. The devil would come to him. You know what's funny? The devil, the very first thing that the enemy tempted him with is the devil tempted him to do a miracle. Isn't that interesting? To do a miracle. Now, the nature of the miracle was selfish. He wanted him to use his power to prove who he was. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And again, Jesus answered with the word. Oh, I thought I was going to have to hiccup. <laughs> Jesus answered with the word. When he got tempted the second time and the third time, always with the word, always with it is written. Now, he was the living word made flesh. So he knew the word. He was trained up in it. Now, you and I, we need to know the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, what weapon do you have? Some people say that praise is a weapon. Okay. Some people say that worship is a weapon. Some people say that prayer is a weapon. Yeah, the word of God is a weapon. It is the sword of the spirit. I don't know of any other weapons that the Bible talks about. Maybe it slips my mind, but it, at, at the present moment, the only weapon that I'm aware of is the sword of the spirit. And then you have the shield of faith. Yes, you can use a shield as an offensive weapon. Your faith can be a weapon that, that, that you can use to attack the enemy with your faith. Sure. But the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is our offensive weapon. Whether we use it in prayer, whether we use it in meditation, the word of God is powerful to defeat the enemy. Know the word of God. This is why Bible in a year is so powerful. This is why Bible in a year 
can be so beneficial to you and can be so helpful because we've endeavored to read through the entire Bible in the year 2020. Can you imagine from Genesis to Revelation how many weapons you can gleam and draw out of the Word of God? We're talking 66 books, 66 different scrolls filled with God's Word filled with all kinds of swords that you can use to defeat the devil. But you're not going to know, you're not going to have a weapon if you don't get into the book. This is why it's imperative that we make a commitment to know what the Word of God says. It is a weapon. If you're struggling with fear, the Word of God says, uh, I did not give you a spirit of fear for, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and that of a sound mind. If you're struggling with uh, thoughts of doubt, if you're struggling with double mindedness, the word of, if it's a devil, if it's a spirit coming against you, trying to bring confusion, if it's a spirit coming against you, lying to you, trying to lead you astray, lead you in error, the word of God says, God has given me a sound mind. You quote the word, devil, get out of here. It is written. God has given me a sound mind. I reject insanity. I reject madness in the name of Jesus. I reject the spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus. I have a sound mind. It is written. Get out of here. That's a weapon. And we won't know that if we don't read 1 Timothy. I believe it's 1 Timothy 1 and 7. So if this is your first time watching Bible in a year, welcome Welcome to Digital Disciple Ministries and welcome to this video series. This is a devotional video designed to teach you how to think about the Word of God and get you excited about learning God's Word and hiding it in your heart. Now, we're obviously more than halfway through the year, but it's cool. Don't worry about it. You can pick up right here where we are with day 264 and move along with us throughout the rest of the year. Or if you wish, go back to day number one, make a commitment to read the scriptures and watch the video, watch the meditation, watch the uh, exhortation on the reading and just work your way through that if you have the faith to do so. There's no rush. All of the videos are available to you already. Videos one through 264. So, Let's get into the Bible. I've got several scriptures here. And uh, I want to begin with the book of Psalms. We're in Psalms chapter 109. And I am reading from the King James Version, which is custom for me to do. But you all can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are comfortable with. It's up to you. I like the King James. And the Bible says in chapter 109 of the book of Psalms, beginning with verse 21, But do thou for me, O God, the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good. Deliver thou me. Because your mercy is good, deliver me. Do it for your name's sake. Help me for your name's sake. Help me on account of who you are. It, it's not about me. It's not about what I've done. It's not about what I've accomplished. It's not about how many days I fasted this year. It's not about how many days I was faithful to Bible in a year. It's not about how many days I went to church. It's not about how many times I opened up the book. It's not about how many times I, I gave food to somebody or how many times I gave money to somebody. It's not about anything that I've done on my own accord. It's about you, but for your name's sake, because 
You have mercy, deliver me. Deliver me because you're good. Deliver me because you're merciful. Deliver me because you are the God of my salvation. Deliver me from darkness because you are light. Deliver me from hatred because you are love. Deliver me from fear because you are my confidence. Deliver me from the hand of the enemy because your name is a strong tower, a place of refuge that all the righteous can run into. Deliver me from my sickness because you are the healer. Bind up my wounds because you heal the brokenhearted. Open my eyes, let me see because you are the God that opens the blinded eyes. Lord, cause me to walk because you are the God that raises up the lame man. Cause me to fight, God, because you are the God that teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Do it for your name's sake and not for any other reason that I might be able to conjure up in my own strength or in my own ability. Not because I love you, not because I trust you, not because I worship you, not because I praise you, but for your name's sake. Do it because you're merciful, oh God, for I am poor and needy. And my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locust. Poor and needy. I don't have what it takes. Poor most of the time implies I don't have money. When you're poor and you can't afford a house, you don't have the money to get a house. When you're poor and, and, and you're hungry because you're poor, you don't have the money to buy food. If you don't have the clothes because you're poor, it's because you don't have the money to buy clothes. When you're poor, you have a need. And the psalmist wrote, for I am poor and needy. My heart is wounded within me. There is a lack. There is a deficiency. Something happened. I'm destitute of healing. I'm destitute of wholeness. I've been bruised. I've been compromised. A wound means that you've received a blow, whether it's bleeding or not. It, you're wounded. You received a blow. Something happened. Deliver me because you are good, oh God. I'm wounded. I can't help myself. I'm poor and needy. I can't get myself out. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. It's not about me. Brother and sister, it's not about you. It's not about anybody else except for the God that we serve. When we take our eyes off of ourselves and we put our eyes on God and we begin to magnify God and look at how big God really is. Do you know the closer you get to God, the bigger he becomes to you? The deeper you look at God, the closer you inspect who God is, the bigger he becomes. This is what magnifying God means. Make God bigger. Make God bigger. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Because God is good. He's given us everything that we need. This verse is vital. Whenever the devil comes around and tries to tell you, you don't have this, you don't have that, you should be depressed because you didn't have your dad, you should be depressed because you didn't have your mom, you should fall into a state of depression because you don't have the job that you want because you don't make $5 more than you want, you should be depressed. The Bible says, blessed be God, the f blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us blessed that's past tense it means it's already happened we've already been blessed God already did it he doesn't have to do it again it's already there it's already in heavenly places all we have to do is access what was freely provided for us 
in Christ Jesus. All spiritual blessings, every spiritual blessing that you can think of, every spiritual need that you can think of, there's a blessing in the heavenlies that's out there for you to get. All you got to do, bless God. And reach out by faith and receive it. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. I love this verse. A matter of fact, you want to note this verse. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. I know you read it, right? You read it, right? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. That's a good verse to memorize. Listen to what the Bible says. This is one of them swords right here. This, this is a sharp sword. In whom we have redemption through his blood. We have redemption. For point and purpose, let us define the word redemption. Noun, redemption. The action of saving or being saved from sin. This is what the dictionary says. The action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus has gained possession of us. So that means there was an exchange. The blood was shed. The price was paid for our sins. And there was an exchange. We were in the hands of the enemy at one point. But God brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light by the exchange of blood. The currency of heaven is the blood of Jesus that purchased our redemption. We were bought by the blood. Regaining or gaining possession of something. God gained possession of us. We belong to the devil. God gained possession of us by purchasing our or paying our price. Let's look up the word redeem. Compensate for the faults or bad aspects of something. Gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. Fulfill or carry out a pledge or promise. We've been redeemed by the blood. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom? Talking about being in Christ. Again, baptism. So vital. Baptism in Jesus' name. When we're baptized, we're placed in Christ. In whom? Who? Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood. The blood is applied at baptism in Jesus' name. When we are baptized into Christ, we are redeemed by his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption. I've been redeemed. If the devil comes around and, and, and you feel like, you know what? Devil, you are not allowed to be here. I've been redeemed. I don't belong to you. When depression comes around and you've been baptized in the name of Jesus and you belong to Christ, you can tell that devil, skedaddle, skeet off, leave, bounce, dip, haul, carry yourself. Because I don't belong to you. Depression, I don't belong to you anymore in the name of Jesus. Anger, I don't belong to you. I've been redeemed by the blood. Lust, I don't belong to you. I've been redeemed by the blood. I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to you, lust. I don't belong to you, witchcraft. I don't belong to you, spirit of divination. I don't belong to you, spirit of addiction. I don't belong to you, spirit of oppression, spirit of bondage. I belong to Jesus. I have been redeemed by his blood. This is what pleading the blood sounds like. People say, oh, I plead the blood of Jesus. Well, here's, here's the issue. Here's the issue that I have with that. 
Uh, are you pleading the blood by saying I plead the blood is saying I plead the blood of Jesus is that actually pleading the blood let's for point and purpose define the word plead shall we plead make an emotional appeal present and argue for especially in court or in another public context To present in context, to argue for. That's what pleading the blood is arguing what the blood has already done. The blood has redeemed me from every devil. The blood has redeemed me from every bondage. There is no devil in hell or out of hell or anywhere else that can bind me and keep me and hold me in possession that I cannot be oppressed by the devil. Anytime the devil begins to oppress you, anytime the devil begins to harass you and lie to you and try to make you feel and believe that you belong to him, you plead the blood. You plead the blood by declaring, hey, this is what the blood of Jesus did for me. I was paid by the blood. Every sin was paid for. And because of that, I don't belong to you anymore. Fear. I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus because I have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. That's making an emotional appeal. This is what pleading the blood is. We've overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Our testimony is the appeal, making an emotional appeal, making an argument. Our testimony becomes the argument. I testify. My, my testimony is my argument. My testimony is my emotional appeal. Hey, I've been set free from that. I'm repeating the word of God. I'm confessing the word of God. He whom the son has set free is free indeed. That's my testimony. Whatever God says is my testimony. I got to personalize it. This is how we plead the blood. We don't plead the blood by saying I plead the blood. We plead the blood by making an emotional appeal, declaring what the blood has done for us according to what the Bible tells us. You can find freedom in that. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. The price was paid. And by the word of their testimony, the emotional appeal, the plea. Pleading the blood. Testimony, blood. Pleading the blood. Emotional appeal. The blood. The blood. Praise God. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus and all the work that was accomplished at the cross. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I bring all flesh to the cross, all flesh. I bring it to in the subjection to the cross and I declare the blood has made me free. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm not a slave to death because of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And the life is in the blood. I render that I am a new creation, crucified with Christ, alive in you by your spirit. I pray the same for my brothers and sisters. Bring into active effect immediately the benefits of the cross right now in their life. This includes freedom. This includes liberty. This includes healing in Jesus name. Right now I speak it. I decree it. I release it in Jesus name. Receive it. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. God bless you. I know, right? Hey, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications so that you won't miss any content. <laughs> God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Lord have mercy, please have 
mercy on me. And if I done done somebody wrong.